Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about House of X number three. Oh, that's right, X. Uh, and we're going to unlock the secrets of Jonathan Hickman's autochthonous alphabet today on Comic Book News. <laughs> Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to continue our look at uh, House of X, Powers of X. This is pa House of X number three by Jonathan Hickman, uh, art by Pepe Larraz. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, some of the uh, interesting plot revealing points in here. So there might be some spoilers if you haven't read it yet. We're also going to go off and check out some theories. And we're also going to examine the Krakoan alphabet, which has finally been revealed for the first time and lets us decode some of the secret messages that Jonathan Hickman has been sending to us. So without further ado, you know we're going to the Million Dollar Comics camp. So um, House of X number three, there's a lot of these text pages and a lot of material that actually seems pretty important. So we're going to go over it uh, today. First, let's kind of go through and talk about the plot of the issue. If you've been following these books, we know from Powers of X uh, that <clears throat> Moira McTaggart's ninth life uh, was lived in pursuit of one bit of information, finding out the location and time of the rise of Nimrod. Turns out, Moira has figured out that, look, Sentinels are inevitable. We cannot stop the rise of the Sentinels. I tried killing... Um, all the people that made the Sentinels, I killed their family, I did everything, it didn't work. So uh, it's inevitable that Sentinels are coming, but maybe what's not inevitable is the rise of the ultra-sentient nanite bot uh, known as Nimrod. So in the last issue, uh, Professor X and Magneto told um, Cyclops he was going to need to go on a mission to outer space, find the Mother Mold. The uh, giant uh, sentient master mold that builds uh, mother mold that builds master molds. What's a master mold and what's a set? What are we talking about here? So, um, luckily, uh, Hickman breaks it down for us. So, a regular sentinel. Sentinels are the classic sentinels we're used to seeing, the big purple dudes. Um, you know, they're not sentient, they are mutant hunting robots, uh, and they have non-replicating adaptive technology meaning like they could find out if you beat them one way you can't beat them that way again they'll adapt around it not truly artificially intelligent but adaptive then there's a master mold which was a, a replicating uh, adaptive sentinel factory that is self-aware and capable of creating those sentinels that we just talked about okay so mother mold master molds uh, appeared i don't even remember when, what era that was in the comics but uh uh it comes from old X-Men stories, right? Now, a mother mold is a new concept. A mother mold is a replicating adaptive sentinel factory that is self-aware and capable of creating master molds. So while a master mold is incapable of improving beyond its ultimate sentinel state, it's theorized that given enough time, a mother mold is capable of producing purely adaptable machines based on nano sentinel technology. Okay. And that's what we believe the Orcus organization uh, is building in outer space. That's what we know they're building. Next is an Omega Sentinel, a human infected with nano sentinel technology and progressively transformed from human to machine. See the Omega cycle, and we'll look at that. And then the next stage in the evolution is uh, to a Nimrod, a pure nano sentinel construct anti-mutant adaptive self-aware self-replicating virtually indestructible this is the nimrod that we know from uncanny x-men uh that what we knew is that it was created in the far future and it had come back in time and did had tons of stories in the x-men and tons of continuity um we get a lot of these text boxes so this talks about nimrod and how nimrod is an is an end state and all the uh steps we need to get through um to create a Nimrod and basically what I just outlined that, that they've realized that they can't stop Sentinels but they've got to stop Nimrod okay and then we cut to Project Achilles and this is where this book goes into more of kind of a straight action more characterization more like a straightforward comic for maybe the first time um, so we're seeing the trial of Sabretooth we saw him get arrested by the Fantastic Four in a previous issue he's taken to the Supermax supervillain prison and uh, who should show up but White Queen 
and uh, the Cuckoos, and they're here to tell uh, the Super Judge that mutants now have uh, total like diplomatic immunity based on their new deal with the the, the UN and, and participating nations that want their mutant super drugs. Okay, that we, we also talked about in a previous issue. So anyway, this uh, means that Sabretooth gets to walk off scot-free. Um, and then we talk about the Omega Cycle. This is where it talks about how we get to the Omega Sentinel. And it talks about the process of that. But I this is something I hadn't really heard of. I wasn't really aware of. But 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 um, it's going to come into play in a minute, and we'll, and we'll see. So, the you know, they make their mission to outer space. And, uh, you know, Nightcrawler is able to sort of teleport aboard fr from their ship to the space station, do a little bit of reconnaissance. And he says, hey, Karima, what a surprise. Picking sides, are we? And she says, actually, that was all of you, wasn't it? I didn't know who this was. Karima didn't mean it. That didn't mean anything to me. So I had to do a little bit of research, and I'm going to share that research with you. Um, so anyway, Nightcrawler leaves, and... We have a little adventure, and I think there's some really interesting stuff here where Hickman explores, like, motivations of the characters. Nobody is strictly evil in this scenario. I mean, w when Cyclops leaves on the suicide mission, the, the kind of pep talk that Magneto gives him is is pretty close to what I have to assume um, they give, like, terrorists when they're going on suicide bombing missions. It's like, you know, you're going to live forever. You're going to, your, your memory is going to live on. So even if you die, blah, 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 typical kind of stuff. Little spooky, you know, but Cyclops is like really buys into it and truly believes in um, Magneto and Professor X's dual mission. And in this case, as they're flying to outer space, they're talking about how there's probably innocent civilians on the ship we want to avoid killing. And uh, I think it's Marvel Girl who points out, you know, those these are just scientists that like from their point of view, they're trying to save the human race. So from their point of view, they're not doing something evil. And Wolverine's like, well, they're trying to, you know, commit genocide so anybody on that station nobody's hands are clean um an interesting sort of look at the moral grayness of like super villainy that you don't usually see right they would usually just be all like mm, cackling evil villains and and we would love to see them die it's not so simple here in fact there's a love relationship between two of them and i'm not going to give away what happens here in the, in the cliffhanger kind of ending that's going to be continued next time um but what i will give away uh, is uh, something that Hickman has finally revealed, the complete Krakoan alphabet. Now, this is something that people online on Reddit and other places have been uh, sort of trying to piece together, right? Because if you, th th there have been all these messages in the back of, of the X-Men books written in this language, and we didn't have a key to the language till today. But, you know, based on what you know, that it's just a, basically a cipher, a letter substitute system, it's it's not too hard to figure out that, you know, the letters that are used the most in phrases are probably vowels. And from there, you can sort of start to reconstruct a table of what the letters are. Um, anyway, it was difficult because there aren't just 26 different characters. Uh, there were like 29 characters. And, uh, you know, let's go l look a little closer at that. Um, <clears throat> the Krakoan alphabet, right? So Hickman created this 29 character alphabet. And why 29 characters? Because um, certain characters, are, it's sort of like, um, instead of just letters, these are like phonic letters, sort of. So there's a C sound, but there's also a CH sound. And uh, there's a S sound, but there's also an ST sound, a T and a TH sound, right? And so those three extra letters sort of threw people for a little bit of loop, and it was really hard to figure out what some of these messages um, had been saying. Uh, but now... We can go back and we can see, um, by the way, next issue of House of X will be next week, followed by Powers of X the following week. And, but so that's what these are. It turns out these are previews, right? And let's, I will translate. Uh, so first of all, this character and this character are not included in the alphabet. We don't know what these characters are, but I think it's safe to assume they're kind of like brackets. They're not really characters. They're more like punctuation. Anyway, in between those characters, it says next, it will be done, right? And since we know the next issue coming is the next House of X, and we know that Cyclops in the previous issue said, does it need to be done? Then it will be done. 
Uh, maybe this is a clue that the X-Men are going to be um, successful in their space mission. Uh, maybe not. Maybe it's a red herring. But uh, now that we've got the uh, uh, Little Orphan Annie secret decoder ring, we can crack these messages. Oh, and there's one more. And this one says, then something sinister, right? And and you get to see some of the, uh, like the duel, the, the, the TH character, then... Uh, something sinister, right? And this is what was kind of perplexing all those uh, crypto nerds out there who are having trouble figuring this out. So then something sinister, that implies, you know, we're going back to Powers of X, which takes place in during different parts of X-Men history. So maybe we'll be looking at the part from Timeline 9 where Mr. Sinister created the Chimeric Mutants or perhaps his involvement in some of the other timelines. Anyway, we'll be seeing that soon enough. Um so let's go into Karima, right? Oh, because I'm sorry, I forgot to mention back in the Million Dollar Comics camp. So after not, uh, after Nightcrawler ports on board and sees Karima and uh, and calls her out by name, then he comes back to the ship and says they have an Omega Sentinel in there with them. He doesn't explicitly connect the dots that he's talking about Karima. You would have to know, of course, that this character, Karima, is, in fact, uh, Karima Shapandar. She's a, uh, also known as the Omega Sentinel. Okay, She uh, is uh, first published in X-Men Unlimited Volume 1, number 27, in June of 2000. Was created by Chris Claremont and Brett Booth. When I saw that this character was created by Claremont, it all made sense because of, uh, if Hickman's going to respect anything from the last umpteen years of X-Men continuity, he's going to go for the Claremont stuff, right? And Claremont created this character uh, uh, just as the same sort of idea that uh, you can see where her, her powers and her origin, if you go ahead and, and, and research it, match up with what Hickman was talking about on how Omega level mutants are activated, come online, and then eventually become uh, uh, Nimrod is the idea. I'm still not 100% sold that um, that Nimrod is, is necessarily coming from um, Karima, I mean, it seems pretty well spelled out from the material that we're seeing here. You can kind of put that together. Um, but I have some other questions and some other theories. And this is where we're going to get into um, some kooky X-Men conspiracy theories, right? So um, here we go. Theory number one, the Professor X that we've been seeing, Chrome Dome Professor X with the giant X helmet, my theory is that might not be Charles Xavier. My theory is that could be Doug Ramsey, a.k.a. Cypher. Now, we know he's got a deep connection to Krakoa. We saw in the last issue that in the previous timeline, he actually did like a merge. Somehow his powers merged with Krakoa um, to create a sort of synth synthetic mutant character. In, in this timeline, all we know is that he's the only one who can actually speak to Krakoa because of his mutant power of languages. Um, he's the only one who can understand the unique kind of Krakoa plant language. Um, but we haven't really seen him, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I, I, we haven't explicitly seen how that's working. And when you start talking about mutants and merging with techno-organic um, entities, I start thinking about Warlock and Doug Ramsey and uh, his history. I also start thinking about the sinister origins of Krakoa and how these things might all fit together. It's tough to say, but I think um, Cypher is one of the real mysteries of this uh, book so far that hasn't been touched on. The other one that I want to uh, go into is the missing timeline, timeline six, and the idea of what timeline we are actually reading in House of X. House of X seems to be, I mean, you, you would think this is just a normal Marvel continuity timeline, but there sure seems to be a big difference in the way the X-Men were founded. In this reality, they finally, uh, Charles and uh, uh, Magneto realize early on 
that they're going to cooperate and work together, not to be mutant separatists and not to be uh, to like Magneto has always advocated and not to be assimilated into humanity as Xavier has always advocated, but together they're going to work together to make uh, mutants a, a separate and equal uh, race of beings on the planet Earth that have things to offer to humanity in return for uh, acceptance. So this is an interesting strategy. It's definitely something new, though. It's not what we know from our X-Men timeline. So where is the current X-Men? Where is the X-Men timeline that we've known and loved for so long or known and hated for so long, depending on your point of view? Um, could it be the missing timeline six from our previous timeline discussion? Could it? Could that have been the timeline that we know and that Moira at some point dies and it spawned the next several timelines and has put us where we are? Is it possible that uh, the 11th life of Moira actually is the life that we know and that it's gonna ha it hasn't happened yet? I think that's unlikely, but I guess it's a possibility. Man, I'm all mixed up, but in a good way, right? So, um, hey, let me know in the comments what you think. You got any theories about the missing timeline six and what timeline we're reading in House of X? I want to know your opinion. And you know what else I want you to do? I want you to uh, tell your friends to like, comment, and subscribe on these videos. We're, I think, four measly subscriptions away from 300 and when we hit number 300 things are going to go nuts here i don't know how exactly but it's going to be fantastic i guarantee it so hey keep reading comics keep reading x-men we're going to be back we're covering this thing totally if there's one thing i learned from my recent uh, political post you guys don't want to care hear about politics and you do want to hear about x-men and buddy i'm here to deliver so Keep watching and we'll see you next time.